Hello everyone, this is B Harper from supermarcy.com and welcome back to another review. Alright, so today I will be giving you another dose of Guillermo del Toro in the form of 2004's Hellboy, starring Ron Perlman, Selma Blair, John Hurt, Doug Jones, Jeffrey Tambor and David Hyde Pierce. So first things first, prior to seeing this movie I had no knowledge of Hellboy. I didn't know who the character was or any of his constituents. I didn't know who his creator Mike Mignola was because by this point I didn't have much of an interest in comic books and that, that really hasn't changed in, in that many years because while I have a cursory knowledge about comic books, I'm not actually a huge reader of them. I know, shame on me, especially since a lot of Hellboy draws from mysticism. Mysticism, religion, the occult, and a huge hefty dose of H.P. Lovecraft. Shame on me for not knowing anything about this comic book series, because this was stuff I just loved to gorge myself on. I, I love that type of stuff. So when this movie came out, I went in completely blind, and you know what? I think that's a huge reason as to why I thoroughly enjoy this movie. It is so left of center and it doesn't necessarily follow the traditional superhero type of formula, but damn it, at the same time it is so charming, wildly imaginative, and it's not just because of Del Toro's uh, direction either. It is, It really is a strong collaborative effort and it really goes to show about what happens when you get a bunch of really good people in front of and behind the camera to make a project like this? you really got to watch yourself when it comes to movies that deal with the supernatural and the metaphysical and everything like that. Because even though we can just dismiss these things and say, oh, you can do anything here, blah, blah, blah. Well, no. Hellboy has its own bunch of rules here. And it comes, it comes into play very early in the movie and it it stays in place. It doesn't necessarily rely on Deus Ex Machina, which is ironically, you know, what the character of Hellboy kind of is. Hellboy is a demon that has been summoned from hell by Nazi occultists during World War II, but he was found by the Allies and uh, under the Allies tutelage he was uh, he was taught to hate the Nazis and you know rightfully so because Nazis all suck and we all know that. So um, Despite the fact that he truly is a hero, he's a thinking, feeling, compassionate individual. He doesn't follow the formula. How so? Well, for one thing, he has his heritage, heritage to be concerned with. And even though Hellboy has been fostered by a very kindly professor who found him, uh, Professor Travis Brattleholm, played by John Hurt, Hellboy has grown up to be a very blunt and, quite frankly, very... <laughs> Uh, grizzly individual played by Ron Perlman. Ron Perlman is what truly makes the character work and if I'm not mistaken Del Toro wanted to make this movie with uh, Perlman in mind. He and Perlman had had a pretty good relationship up to this point. They made a couple of movies together, they got to know, know each other quite well and since then Perlman has popped up in quite a few of uh, Del Toro's movies. So it was just a matter of course that Perlman is just completely perfect for the role. He has the voice, he has the looks, and he has the fearless approach to this character. No, he's not Captain America. No, he's not Iron Man. No, he's not friggin' Batman. He is Hellboy. Hellboy is an individual, and this film... This film is so singular in that. And additionally, all the other characters themselves are quite compelling, because they too have hang-ups like Hellboy. Even though Hellboy is a decent individual, he still worries about his demonic nature. He's he's still a little bit alienated about the way he looks because he 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 does his missions under the, the, the cover of nighttime. Like, imagine if a lot of people saw what Hellboy looked like, and you know, yeah, it's it's a it's an unfortunate sort of uh, deal in this movie. But as time goes on, you really come to accept that Hellboy and his team are still human, if that makes sense. So going back to the people he works with, you have Liz Sherman played by Selma Blair. And Liz is a pyromancer. She has the ability to summon and manipulate fire, but at the cost of the fact that this power comes with negative emotions. So when Liz has been hurt, or she's upset, or she's angry, enraged, that is when her powers manifest, and that is when 
her abilities are just they're like god mode essentially and that is the tragedy of her character she can't afford to be too emotionally involved with these things otherwise she risks killing people and there's a bit of a, a backstory with her character and it's just so tragic to watch and then you have Abe Sapien, played by David Hyde Pierce, and physically portrayed by Doug Jones. Oh, Abe Sapien is just so dreamy. He's, he's so gorgeous to look at, and the way he moves. Doug Jones, I have made no bones about it. Like, Doug Jones is a purely physical performer. He understands grace and agility and expressionism through his movements. And David Hyde Pierce, he just has that very, you know, very clean cut and very sincere voice. It is a beautiful mix between elegance and and class, basically. He is just, everything else in this movie is singular. Abe Sapien is a singular character. So, mercifully enough, Hellboy only focuses on Hellboy's origins in the first, say, 10 to 15 minutes of the, of the movie, and that is also what informs the rest of the plot. By the time present day, uh, present day rolls by, Hellboy is an established uh, agent for the bureau that he works for. He works for a super clandestine and super badass uh, bunch of people who investigate paranormal phenomena, along with Liz and Abe. So uh, by, by this point, this isn't Hellboy's first mission. He isn't you know, tumbling over himself. Like, he, he has this really bitchin' ass gun, he smokes a cigar and everything, he's just so cool. And he comes across this conspiracy that has been, you know, there ever since his, his appearance in our dimension. And you have the character of uh, Rasputin, as in the Mad Monk Rasputin, played by Carl Roden. And what I like about Roden is that he's not necessarily the mustache twirling type of villain, okay? He has a very definitive sense of menace about him, but when I think about it, he somewhat reminds me of Robert Mitchum in his prime as an actor. Mitchum was very well known for his villainous roles. I mean, obviously, he didn't just play bad guys, but when it comes to a character like Max Cady in the original K Fear, you could see what Mitchum was thinking with those squinty eyes. You could see exactly what he was going to do with some poor bastard who was in his way. Same thing can be said about Carl Roden and his, um, and his movements in, in the movie. What I really like about him is that he's very subtle, but at the same time, there's no mistaking his intentions. intentions. And he's uh, backed up by a clockwork Nazi ninja. <laughs> a clockwork Nazi ninja. I don't think I had seen anything like this in, an, in a movie, and once again, this is, you know, brought down to the fact that there is sheer imagination in this movie, and that the individual who plays, um, who plays Cronin, it's a, it is completely a silent performance. He is like a, a beautiful mechanical mime, and he is a really good fighter. Some of the best fight scenes in this movie take place with Cronin, and uh, <laughs> there's, this, there's this really cool thing about this movie is that despite the high stakes here, it has an incredible sense of humour. Around about uh, midway through the movie, Hellboy comes into contact with this this half torso ghoul type of creature, and he he carries it around on his back while it's like talking to him. It's like that you know what in any other movie this would be sort of random, oh my god, what the hell is going on here? But in terms of what Hellboy has done, it has established this sort of stuff is poss possible. And Hellboy isn't overreacting to this this creature. He's like, oh yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know, he's in this a very... It is such a magical, yet off-kilter type of movie. And look, not everybody is probably going to like it as much as I did. And um, you know what? That is their prerogative. But at the same time, Hellboy isn't afraid to be different. It isn't afraid to wear its quirkiness on its sleeve and just have a wonderful time with it. It makes no pretensions about what it is. It isn't trying to be, you know, dark and gritty or anything like that. that that's another thing. This was one movie that wasn't afraid to, you know, take the superhero genre and make it look like a superhero movie. And um, it, it didn't need any of the, um, the, the, the remake type of treatment. This was Mike Mignola's work translated on the screen. This is what Mignola was all about when he drew this comic book, when he made these characters and everything. So 
when you have his work with Guillermo del Toro and Ron Perlman and everybody else there, it's just beautiful serendipity. In terms of what I didn't quite like about this movie, well, for one thing, there is nothing I truly hated about this film. But I do wish there was some sort of a, a further explanation about what Rasputin was all about. Yes, we know there was more to him than the fact that he was just some scary sorcerer. Like, I, I do wonder as to whether or not um, if there, there could have been a further backstory about him. Like, we can presume he was the fictionalized type of bad monk from Russian history, but they never go too in-depth about who, what this guy's all about. We know he's a bad guy, we know he wants to bring on the end of days by opening up hell again and bringing forth hell on earth and using Hellboy, but we don't get much about him as an individual. Maybe that was intentional on the part of um, Del Toro, or the fact that, you know, maybe he had the notion of incorporating this type of backstory, but, you know, being a film, like, they had to cut it down. So, uh, in short, Hellboy is one of the more original type of superhero movies, and given that we are in, in a, you know, currently in a renaissance of Marvel superhero movies, it's always nice to see something different. You have Batman, well, rather, you have DC, and then you have Marvel, and then you have it, more independent type of stuff, and Hellboy sort of... It is like a cornerstone of that type of alignment. Now, you can like whatever you like about, you know, comic book movies, but one thing is for sure, Hellboy wears its originalism, and, or rather originality, and its, uh, and its singularity on its, on its sleeves, and that's why I feel it is a genuinely entertaining and heartfelt movie. There's a lot of uh, sort of left of center jokes here, and you really kind of have to... That's what I also like about this movie. It doesn't spoon feed you all the details at once. Over time, like the, the explanations become apparent, but it does leave the audience, you know, wanting a little bit more. It gives them the ability to fill in the blanks as to what's going on here. And that is so good. I I can't think of any other like major superhero movie that doesn't, you know, throw all this exposition exposition at you all at once. It's just it's on a need to know basis basically. So it's not going to leave you in the dark, but you have to be patient. And it encourages you to use your brain a bit. It encourages your imagination to go wild as to why all this stuff is happening and what this stuff is and everything like that. That is truly a huge compliment that a movie can give its audience, that it trusts them. It trusts them to really think ahead and really be curious about what's going on here. So, in full, I give Hellboy a 4 out of 5. I really need to watch this movie in full again, because what I've actually been doing throughout this review is that I've been remembering it purely on memory, and as you may know, my memory, like Kim Kardashian, does suck. So, <laughs> that was kind of a low blow, wasn't it? But, in all honesty, I, I can't recommend Hellboy enough. It is just a, a sweet and you know, eccentric, but at the same time, wholly accessible type of movie. It really does appeal to the crowd that that is all about the imagination, that, you know, when they were children, they would lie awake at night and just formulate brand new worlds on the ceiling of their rooms. It's, it's cool. It really is cool. It's a cool movie, wonderfully executed, and just... It's, it's watchable. It is so watchable, especially if you want something very, very different to what we have now. So yeah, that was Hellboy, and uh, tune in in the next video for Hellboy 2. It's going to be good. See you later, guys.